and welcome. I'm Ijeoma Onyato. Tonight, President Muhammadu Buhari is confident that government will continue to run smoothly, even in his absence, says he left authority in capable hands. Kaduna State witnesses another round of violence. Three people are killed in clashes between rival youth groups. More reactions trail the release of the Chibok schoolgirls. EDP, Greenback Park Girls campaigners commend federal government's efforts. And one million children flee South Sudan as a result of escalating conflict in Africa's newest nation. And on business news tonight, investments in Lagos State's Lekki Free Zone hits 4.55 trillion naira. And on sports news tonight, Super Eagles coach Gerona Dror invites 25 players to camp ahead of training program in France for Afghan qualifier against South Africa. From Abuja, Court of Appeal OK's probe of Transport Minister Rotimi Amechi for alleged sale of River State government assets. Nigeria is in safe hands. That's what the president is saying as he passes a vote of confidence on his vice, saying he believes in his ability to steer the ship of state in his absence. President Muhammadu Buhari gave this assurance on his Twitter handle, adding that the government will run smoothly while he's away. The president, who has arrived in London for a medical follow-up, handed over leadership to the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. In his tweet, the president states, quote, as I noted earlier, I have absolute confidence that government will continue to run smoothly while I'm away. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. End of quote. Before his departure, President Buhari met with Professor Ushibajo, Senate President Dr. Bukhala Saraki, the Speaker Yakubu Rogara, and the Zamfara State Governor Abubakar Yari in the presidential villa. This latest trip comes less than two months after he spent about 50 days in the UK on medical vacation. An uneasy calm is said to prevail in Kabala West area of Kaduna South after three persons reported to have been killed in the area at the weekend. The news of the killing triggered violence earlier today in some communities, which almost degenerated into a religious crisis. Our correspondents gathered that the residents woke up to discover bodies, which prompted one of the groups to launch a reprisal on a rival group today, leading to the destruction of some property. It's all quiet now, but the signs of security presence in pockets of the Kabbalah community in Kaduna State is a giveaway that something had occurred. The lock shops also adds to the already heightened curiosity of what transpired. Although the sight of the police and other peace agents should exude calm, Residents still move around cautiously, not knowing if the event of the morning will repeat itself. Reports say that trouble started when the body of a youth was discovered, which led to reprisal attacks. This resident gives more details. I was at uh, sleep, somebody called me that they discover a corpse around the river. So my way going there, before I get there, the police have uh, taken the cops. There are actions of... So this is corroborated by the commissioner of police in the state, who says swift action has been taken. Information came that there were cops sighted at uh, a stream within Church Road. We were able to intervene and the situation was brought under control and normalcy returned to the area. Aside from the deaths, the other visible results of the violence are destroyed shops. This man counts his losses. All our property in the store, we cannot find. We lose about new tire with uh, our money, How much? daily money. Right. So can we can reach 400 plus. The police boss sadly recognizes the influence that may be responsible for inciting the youth to resort into violence. I see more of a group of misguided young men and uh, who are into 
all sorts of all forms of drug addiction. We are getting close to ensuring that there's sanity in the state. As investigations continue, the people are left to believe in the security agent's ability to provide the needed protection, to enable them to move around freely like they did before trouble came calling. The evening showers in the nation's federal capital today did not deter members of the Bring Back Our Girls group from convening at the Unity Fountain to celebrate the return of 82 girls just released from the hands of their captors. Some members of the group, as well as lawmakers, however, expressed mixed feelings on the development as they prayed for the safe return of the remaining girls. The group wants the federal government to rehabilitate the rescued girls and enroll them in school. The hugs, smiles and laughter says it all. Eighty-two girls from the government secondary school Chibok in Borono State have just returned from the grips of Boko Haram militants after months of negotiations by the federal government. There were moments of excitement as members of the group chanted their songs of solidarity. But this is a time for mixed feelings for some members of the group. First, they are grateful that 103 of the girls are back, but are sad that others are still with their captors. This, however, is besides their complaint about the shielding of the girls from their parents. It's a mixed feeling, a feeling of joy and uh, happiness because we got up to 82 at once, but uh, still sadness for what is happening to the 113. There were words of encouragement from members of the group on the need to continue with the campaign. You are seeing the result of our continued standing here every day for more than three years. It has either reports, the whole world know now that yes, we, we are saying the truth, we are not standing in vain, it's not political, it's a fight for preservation of humanity. And thereafter came the rains, but they remained undeterred. The president of the Italian Chamber of Deputies, Mrs. Laura Boldrini, who is an official visit to Nigeria, shows solidarity with the group and advised them not to relent in their efforts to bring back the girls. I really appreciate the determination of you, in particular the determination of you women. You are the strongest, you are the leaders, you have to continue this struggle, you have to continue. And yes, indeed, education is the key. Some lawmakers also reacted to the release of some of the girls. I just hope that we do not live it at the Chibok girls, but we as much as possible try to recognize the fact that sex, as I said earlier, is indeed a weapon of modern day warfare. And we try as much as possible to liberate all women everywhere who are victims of this unfortunate war. Uh, all we have to do is put ourselves in the position of a parent, uh, local parent, or, or brother, or a grandfather of any of these kids. I will understand that um, the government um, did the right thing. The return of the 82 girls brings heartwarming cheers to many. It is, however, expected that the same efforts will be put into the rescue of others who are still with their captors. And the federal government has condemned the statements credited to the Ahmed Makarfi faction of the People's Democratic Party, criticizing the process that led to the release of the 82 Chibok girls on Saturday. The faction of the party had kicked against the decision of the federal government to swap some Boko Haram militants for the Chibok girls. But the Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, in a statement, described the stance as indecent, inhuman and ill-timed, adding that it's insensitive to politicize an issue that's generated so much joy across the world. He takes a swipe at the opposition party, saying, quote, it's clear that the PDP, whose incompetence and cluelessness precipitated the Chibok girls' crisis in the first instance, is not wishing and praying for it to end with a safe return of the abducted girls, end of quote. 
He restates the administration's promise to rescue the abducted girls by whatever means possible, adding that there is nothing wrong if the measures included swapping Boko Haram members for the girls. Now let's get another perspective on the release of the Chibok girls. Joining me now from Abuja is a member of the Chibok community. That's the community where the girls were abducted three years ago, Mr. Alan Manasseh. Thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you for having me. All right, so you're a member of the Chibok community. Just tell us what the mood is like in the community when you've seen those pictures now, seeing that the girls have been you know, meeting with um, um, government officials and etc. What's the mood like at home? Well, uh, the mood like in, in Chibok is uh, uh, all about moment of great joy for uh, all of us, especially uh, uh, the parents of uh, uh, these girls and uh, the other family members. It has been three years and counting that we've been waiting for, you know, the rescue of these girls. Initially, we had 21, and getting the 82 back, it's uh, really a very uh, a positive development that we all were so happy about the, you know, breaking of that news uh, two days ago. So it's, it's something that is really indescribable because... Uh, 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 it's overwhelming and it's a, a, a very commendable development from uh, by the federal government. So we are so happy with, 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 with this happening and uh, 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 the parents are really very, very uh, appreciative of uh, uh, all the partners that have, you know, put this to, together. And, and speaking about the parents, can you confirm to us tonight if any of the parents have recognized any of their children, I mean, from the pictures that you've seen, we've seen them meeting with government officials. Has anyone said to you, that's my daughter? Yes. Um, uh, I have uh, spoken with uh, some of the parents that have identified their daughters on uh, the pictures that have so far been shared on uh, uh, the media platform. Even from the first names that was shared yesterday, uh, via a Twitter, the initial 20 names that were shared, even though it was uh, characterized with lots of uh, uh, spelling uh, mistake, but even at that, some parents were able to identify, you know, that yes, that was uh, where the names of their daughters, and seeing the pictures after uh, some parents were able to identify their daughters, and uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, the social media too is, is, is assisting some have uh, their younger ones, uh, the, the family members across that who were able to identify some of their uh, sisters and they uh, placed calls to some of uh, the parents at home and uh, the identification was, uh, uh, was helpful. Okay, now, now members of the, of the Bring Back Our Girls group have been very vocal about um, the fact that there isn't enough information about the welfare of even the 21 that, you know, that were rescued. We have another 82 now. We do know that um, the rehabilitation process will, will start off. What do you know about that process and what do you expect the process should be? Yeah, as for that aspect of uh, 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 verification, identification, and reunification platform that the Bring Back Our Guests uh, advocates were able to put at, uh, at the table of the federal government, that has not been activated very well. And as far as communication to the parents of uh, these girls is concerned, it is not anything to write home about. We are not so impressed with uh, that by the, the federal government. We've made our observation known, especially to the vice president a few weeks ago when uh, the Bring Back Our Guests observed the Global Week of Action culminating the three-year commemoration for the Chibok girls when the parents protested to uh, uh, the Asu Villa and the vice president directed that communication be made available especially to the parents so that they will know the state of uh, uh, affairs, especially uh, 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 information that um, is not that uh, uh, security information that could be disclosed to the parents should be made available right. to them. And uh, uh, we followed it up with the Minister of Women Affairs, but that didn't translate to uh, right. exactly what the, the Vice President was, was talking about. Okay. And uh, uh, more than 48 hours after the rescue of these girls, 
uh, with all the parents we are in contact with, none has been reached out to officially by uh, the federal government as to, okay, your daughter has been identified, or this name is uh, uh, what, uh, what so-so person called to be uh, uh, her name, and is this your daughter? And right. even that, without even calling okay. them to yeah. come to Abuja first, yes. at least there should be that first point of uh, right, contact Mr. to the parents Mr. so that at least it will prepare them to know exactly what they need to do you All know, right. thank uh, you so moving much. forward. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Alan Manasse, for sharing your thoughts with us. And we will follow that up as well. Thank you for sharing your thoughts on the news at 10 tonight. And in part two... And in part two, after the break, Italy's government offers to support Nigeria's efforts at fighting terrorism, commends federal government for securing release of the 82 abducted Chibok girls. That's in a moment. Please stay with us.